this is a community meeting, and uh, I've actually sort of picked on uh, what was quite an extraordinary woman, uh, Helen Keller. Um, and we're going to really start today with this, this whole thought that, you know, alone we, we can only do so little. Uh, together we can do so much more. Uh, for those who've never heard of uh, Helen Keller, uh, she was, uh, she contracted something like meningitis when she was really young, became deafblind, uh, and yet despite being deafblind, she was an author and a public speaker, uh, and the first deafblind person to, to graduate from college. Uh, and so we're really going to talk about achievement in, in the face of adversity, because uh, we've all got challenges to, to overcome. And I think we all kind of started, you know, the first challenge that we put out to the community all of those years ago was this idea. Like, it, it's a what if. You know, what if you could have a sequencer that plugs into a laptop and gives you really long reads? What, what would you do uh, with a sequencer like this? Uh, and it turns out that you guys had some, uh, some pretty good ideas. Uh, and we've been sort of combing through some of those early... Uh, very, very early submissions to the Minine Access Program back in 2013, 2014. Um, and it's quite, it is really humbling to see really just how far ahead all of you were looking at the time that you were submitting these. Um, so there were some of you sort of applying, sort of saying HLA, the Minine's going to be great for this, it's got long reads, you can provide complete haplotype sequencing. These are submissions from 2013, 2014. Uh, pediatric cancer screening, detection of small amounts of circulating tumor DNA. We, we heard Billy, Billy talk about that yesterday. Hard to reach regions of the genome, uh, repeat expansions, the Y chromosome. All of these things, they were all really unsolved problems, unsolved challenges in genomics uh, back in 2013. And through all of the work that all of you have done as part of the community, um, You've all proven that this, this, is, this is now coming. Uh, now, this is, also another, uh, this is also another part of what we love about the community. This is, back then, was a PhD student uh, working on human mosaicism, working on clinical applications, and again, really, really visionary about what he believes the technology could do. Uh, and uh, we didn't quite get this project done, Danny, but um, he will talk to you very soon, Danny will talk to you about what he has been doing with the technology since then. Um, so publication after publication have come. We've done the HLA. Uh, we've done the detection of structural variants in cancer. That was all, all the way back in sort of 2016. And Winston's here. That's, you know, one of the papers that uh, he, con one of the many papers that Winston contributed to. Uh, liquid biopsies, dark genomes, complete genomes, Y chromosomes, uh, the sequencing of thousands of Icelanders, as we, as we understand what to do with structural variants. And we just continue. We've gone from publications to a lot of our communities starting to adapt the workflows and start to figure things out. How do you plug the sequencer together with the analysis and how do you run things in an environment such that you can start to really make a difference? And so we've got um, Jonathan Edgeworth here, who's do doing all the rapid pneumonia metagenomics, a lot of people doing AMR tuberculosis. You've got Justin and team here uh, who, can go, who can do drug-resistant TB in, in you know, as little as four and a half hours. Uh, of course, we've had MPOX, SARS-CoV-2, all of these pathogens uh, that you guys have all made a huge contribution to. Moving on to the larger genomes, of course, uh, onto, onto human genetics, there's immense potential uh, into, into how this technology can really make a difference, uh, all the way from sort of targeted tests that can uh, solve odysseys where people have been trying to figure out, um, you know, what they have, what they can do, uh, and then moving that into sort of rapid whole genome sequencing and getting, also getting targeted sequencing uh, from birth to answer in under three hours. So back to Helen. Uh, so optimism, it's, uh, you know, it is the faith that leads to achievement. We can do nothing without hope and confidence. And confidence is a really important word. As we start moving from discovery, publications, proof of concepts, as we start moving into the application of the technology, uh, confidence is what we need to bring. A whole suite of you who are 
developing these assays. And so we will be relaunching Qline. It will be available to pre-order this week on our shop. Uh, we're going to relaunch it where we, where we left off before COVID. Uh, but there are more devices in the pipeline, and we are adding the Q20 plus chemistry during the first half of next year. Um, so Qline's fully end-to-end -end verified system, locked software, locked chemistry versions, so you won't be getting a minnow update every month. Um, and there is a high visibility to the upgrade roadmap. Uh, and this is what we hear from all of our customers who really want to get developing assays and really want to get deploying the technology in standard practice. This is what they need. Internally, we're pushing beyond Qline. We're getting our softwares developed to the 62304 uh, standard, something that all of our teams have had to learn a lot about over the last couple of years. Uh, we've also got strong 13485 product pipelines coming through with Oxford Nanopore Diagnostics. We showed yesterday that we're starting to integrate those analysis pipelines, those point and click pipelines and integrating those into our sequencing systems. Uh, we've also got Project Turbot uh, underway, uh, for which you can go on our website and register your interest. And so we are integrating sequencers like MinIons and P2s into standard liquid handling devices uh, with the idea of being able to sort of process 12 to 24 samples from extraction to analysis all in one walkaway solution. So this is the journey that we're on. We are all doing the discovery science together. Some of you started to take that discovery science, started to translate it uh, into what it means for humans. Our next step, of course, is to build on that confidence, deliver, deliver the capabilities you need in order to start translating that to patients, into practice, and then, of course, into the community. And you saw a glimpse of the future yesterday with, with LACMAL and, uh, and what we were showing in terms of our liquid biopsy. And so, again, back to sort of achievement, why do we need to do this? Well, you know, there are a number of global challenges that we can address together. We can address an enormous amount of need that there is in health. So we can uh, look at sort of novel, high-impact areas of human genomics uh, and start treating for complex genetic traits. And we can do it quickly, we can do it affordably, we can do it in a distributed manner. Environmentally, we've got our Org1 program uh, running, and again, we are building reference grade assemblies, but we're also working with everyone in that space to really deploy the outcome of those reference grade assemblies such that we get into the, into the field supporting critical conservation projects. And, of course, agriculture, as Spike mentioned yesterday, the cassava project, it was and continues to be an amazing piece of work. Um, but it's really our responsibility to take that from one piece of work to something that happens every day. And so with that, I want to thank you.